We recently went for a day trip to Buffalo. It's about, well, in good traffic, it should be under two hours to get to the Peacebridge um, border. But uh, with traffic, it's a little bit more than that. And um, this was my first time back in the States in over two and a half years. Last time I was there was February 2020. And we all know what happened in March 2020. Uh, we were in lockdown, so there was no crossing the border then. And um, also because of uh, the cat that you see on these videos every so often, um, she's an elderly cat and one of us has to be home. I can't really have just someone popping in to look after her, to feed her, you know, maybe for an hour a day or something like that. She kind of needs someone around. So this was my first trip, trip, even though it was a day trip, but I just really, really appreciated being able to travel again. And, um, yeah. So one of the destinations that, um, was on the list was Hyatt's, uh, all things creative, I think is her tagline. And um, my mom has been going to this store for uh, quite a few years now. And relatively recently, they have moved to a huge space. And it's just kind of overwhelming when you step inside. So I think, oh, I may have been there almost an hour. I'm not really sure. It seems like time just stood still and just so many aisles and so many different things. Um, the video shows more of the things that I was interested in, um, but there's oh, loads of categories more. There's like, um, you know, chisel aisle and um, children's uh, art uh, sets and all sorts of things. So if you're in the Buffalo area, you really have to check it out. Now, I didn't want to buy things that I could get at home because really with the um, exchange rate and even without the exchange rate, the prices are kind of similar. Like what would be $10 in Canada is sometimes $10 in the States now and factor in the exchange rate, that's even a whole lot more. So. I looked for things that I wouldn't normally get. And I have, let's start with these Herbain little uh, inks. Now there's a few places in Toronto that carry Herbain. I'm not sure about the size of ink. I've got this size, which is the 30 mil. And this is the 10. I got this size at Lane Wines in Toronto, um, but I wanted to try these greens because you know I'm mad for green. So I got the Vera Empire and the Vera Olive, and I'll swatch those out in a minute. And kind of helped myself getting a pencil. I have loads of pencils, but I like this jumbo pencil. And I've been working with um, a student recently, and I thought this might be good for her. And then I couldn't resist more green. Uh, these are all Derwent Lightfast pencils and they were in a grab bag. So they are five or $10. So that, that's actually a not bad deal. And I can put, I have some of these colors already, but I can put these in with my um, traveling pencil set because I always need more greens. And also picked up this little guy. It's just, I thought it would be good for figure drawing that I do. And then this kind of wacky pencil from Koinor. It's a tritone, so there's three types of green in there. Again, green. And then I've been doing more and more pastel. And actually my husband spotted this. This is a set of 25 sheets of pastel paper, and they're in all different colors with nice deckle edges. 
um, made in India, 100% recycled post-consumer waste. So that's gonna be really neat to try out. I'm sorry for the light changing in here. Um, we're having a kind of weird weather day. It keeps looking like it's just gonna rain all day and then the sun comes out. But the one thing that I was looking at were the Jack Rikison uh, soft pastels. These aren't very, um, I'm not even sure if there is a store in Toronto that carries them. I've only seen them where you can get them online. And that's usually from Hyatt's. Because Amazon sells them, but it's Hyatt's through Hyatt's. This is their landscape set of 20 half pastels, all beautifully hand rolled. And I actually started using them while I was out that day. Let's see if quickly look at that. I started using them on. Um, this drawing was a combination of uh, watercolor and the pastels. I started with the pastel first and I also have a, another one of, uh, call it Silo City. It's um, down by the riverside, I believe. Um, it's all these silos that were part of uh, industrial Buffalo and um, they're turning them into event space and maybe housing, I'm not really sure. There's a bar there already and they have very nice cider, um, but I digress. So I'm gonna swatch these out and you can swatch out the pencils even though I have those already and I will just break away for that now. Okay, I shifted things over here so that I can control the light a bit better because the sun is in and out and it's, when it's out, it's really bright. So, here we go. Here is the Derwent Light Bass in grass green. This is pine. And then like some pines, this is a really nice natural dark green. Some of them are just too blue and unnatural. This one is forest. Again, another nice muted dark green. And olive earth. And finally, spruce green. And again, a really nice, pleasing, natural dark green. So it's nice to add to my travel kit. Here's the funky Koh-i-Noor Tritone one. see a little bit better how the colors change in that and moving on to these urban inks just going to use a brush so we can get better sense of the color Uh, Empire and this is the olive so that's a really bright kind of acidy green I think if I were to get a 
Baker bottle and put it into a fountain pen. It'd probably be the Empire one. But it's really drying quite nicely. Almost like it granulated. We'll come back to it when it's um, perfectly dry. And it's just uh, like Conte. You can smudge it and you can even use water on it. So I think it'd be nice. Now it doesn't all, um, you'll still see the lines and texture underneath it. So if that's what you like, that's good. If you want it to all just wash out, it's not gonna do that. But it does add a nice effect. And it's just a 2B pencil. Just a pencil. That's a fat one. So now we'll move on to the pastels. And I'm going to do them on this um, Claire Fontaine uh, paint on. It's not really a pastel paper, it's a mixed media paper, but I like the gray tone for the pastels. So it's actually goes this way. We'll start with uh, I'm not sure if I'm how they have them numbered. I guess this is number three color. They're really, really nice and soft right off the bat. This is 12. I think that's the only identifier for it. And then I have a Y1. Y9. I'm gonna run out of room. I'm trying to keep them all on here. G22. Okay, Let's space these out a little bit better. G47. TB15. There are a lot of blues. I'm kind of surprised that there's so many blues and not that many greens. B1. B2. Like look how that, I wish you could feel how soft that is. Really, really nice. Uh, B3. Next, B25, B32, I didn't really do this one justice, did I? B39, that's a really nice dark purpley blue. Uh, B2. ER17. EG8. EB1. EB4. It's a really nice cinnamon sort of color. EB42. And finally, EB43. 
And I will be taking these, it's like a, almost like a plasticky wrap around them. I will be taking those off. And so that's the landscape. Rikeson 20, set of 20, uh, half pastels, soft pastels. I was really hoping that they had it um, open stock in this line, but they didn't. They had um, open stock for Sennelier and um, I believe Royal Towns or maybe Schminka or both. Um, but there you go. They are an American company, uh, but they are made in, I think I saw they are made in China yeah so there's there's the actual color numbers right there and once again you'll be able to find these on uh, my website under color charts I list everything um, that I've swatched out you can download them they're PDFs and you'll get a better sense of the color there right Thanks so much. Bye for now.